Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to part two of CT of the Stomach Beyond the Common Gastric Masses. And I promised you last time we would take a look at enhancing gastric lesions. That's not a very common finding. Three things I could think about that do it would include ectopic pancreas, carcinoid tumors, primary in the stomach or occasionally metastatic to the stomach, and then metastasis to the stomach in general, and typically I'm thinking about renal cell carcinoma. Here's a nice example. There's a lesion which looks like maybe it's duodenum, but it's in the antrum. It looks like an enhancing lesion. It looks like a polypoid lesion. You could think about a polypoid mass. You could think about a carcinoid tumor. You could think about a gist tumor. You can see it here again on the coronal views. And then you see it again very nicely here from the uh, patient's antrum toward first portion of duodenum. Well, what else could this be? Enhancing lesion, as I said, you gotta think of things that enhance. Carcinoids and gist tumors or METs. This was biopsied because that's what the concern was and it ended up being ectopic pancreas. Ectopic pancreas is very interesting. Here's another example in the mid body of the stomach. It's a flat polypoid lesion that's enhancing, has a broad base, very nicely shown in this case on the sagittal view as well. Ectopic pancreas, also called heterotopic accessory or aberrant pancreatic tissue, is defined as pancreatic tissue lacking anatomic and vascular continuity with the body of the gland. And ectopic pancreas is usually located at stomach, duodenum, or jejunum. Most of the lesions are small and they're incidental findings, and patients are not symptomatic. Typically, antrum is a really good location. Um, again, you got to think about them when you see the lesion. It's something you probably do better when you have conference than in real life because you're thinking more about other things. Nevertheless, the lesion has to be biopsied and you get the answer. In this article by Kim, ectopic pancreas may manifest as a submucosal mass in the stomach or duodenum and misinterpreted as another submucosal tumor, such as GIS, lyomyoma, are two of the examples. Again, it can be mistaken, not only at CT, but ultrasound, MR, and even on direct visualization with endoscopy. So again, it's something to consider in the differential diagnosis. It was something that was a challenge in the old days in fluoroscopy. It would look like a polypoid flat lesion. You'd even worry about malignancy or maybe just a benign tumor, but just a very nice diagnosis. Now, another patient with some vague abdominal pain, and you can see multiple vascular lesions in the liver, and then a vascular two-centimeter mass in the body of the stomach. I guess it could be a uh, ectopic pancreas. I guess that would be the differential. The vascular liver lesions are concerning. Could they be a typical hemangiomas? I guess theoretically, but you really have to worry about metastasis. This was a gastric carcinoid tumor with liver metastasis. A small tumor, well-defined. I don't see any adenopathy. Again, one of the differentials for a gastric vascular mass. Here it is nicely on the coronal views, sitting along the greater curvature of the stomach. Another case, at first glance, it looks like a pancreatic mass, but there's a large peripancreatic mass, which is actually in large nodes. When you look more carefully at the stomach, and we're gonna look at some more views of that, you actually can see that the patient has a lesion in the gastric wall particularly nicely shown on the arterial phase right there. This was the primary tumor. This was a gastric carcinoid, and these were metastatic nodes. It's impressive how large the nodes are compared to how small the primary tumor is. Again, looking at this, your first guess would have been a neuroendocrine tumor, maybe pancreatic uh, or peripancreatic or paraganglioma, something like that. Once you saw the stomach lesion, you got to go with your carcinoid tumor. Again, a few more views showing this very nicely. And again, here's some of the MIP images, the large nodal mass, which is vascular, which is classic with carcinoid, and then the primary gastric mass, which is relatively small. 
you can see when you go to Venus phase imaging the challenges because the lesion washes out. Now it just looks like a solid mass. And again, you'd be thinking pancreas or some large nodal mass. So a real challenging case. Here's another patient, a patient with a history of renal cell, had a GI bleed. At first glance, you say, gee, is this just food in the stomach? But you realize it looks funny for food. And then when you get more images, particularly the coronals, you realize you're dealing with a bulky mass that's lobulated, that's ulcerating. Yes, it could be an intraluminal gist tumor, but in a patient with renal cell, we always think about METs. Remember renal cell, besides in this case, going to liver and having ascites, uh, patients with renal cell, particularly clear cell, can commonly go to pancreas, but they also go to small bowel, colon, and stomach. Here's some of the volume rendered images, bulky tumor, antrum of stomach. Again, think about that gastric polyp, that juvenile polyp I showed you before, almost looks similar. Here's the cinematic with the lobulations. This was a large biopsy proven metastatic renal cell carcinoma to the stomach. Okay, what other entities are there? There's some unusual things and I'll just cover four of them. I did mention gastric juvenile polyps before, but I'll just show you that same example over. There's something called gastric antral vascular ectasia, GAVE. It's also called watermelon stomach. It's typically in the antrum and it's very vascular and you can see it here. You're thinking about a carcinoma, you're thinking about maybe a neuroendocrine tumor. Um, you don't see any adenopathy. And when you look at it, interestingly on the coronal views, look how it sits in the antrum. Is this some type of infiltrating tumor? It's vascular, could be adenocarcinoma, less likely lymphoma. There it is really, it looks like a fungating mass that's very vascular. That's the classic location and it's called watermelon stomach because it looks like stripes when the endoscopist views it directly. You can see it here very nicely on the volume rendering and on the MIP imaging. And that's your basic unusual tumor in the antrum of the stomach. It's called watermelon stomach, WMS more commonly gave gastric antral vascular ectasia. Typically it's resected and the patient will do fine. Presentation is bleeding and typically it's confused with malignancy. Uh, here's an article, watermelon stomach or gastric antral ectasia is an uncommon but clinically important cause of chronic occult or overt GI blood loss. Okay, a very unusual diagnosis, but something to be aware of. Again, it's the endoscopic appearance that really gives you that look of watermelon stomach. If you look in the textbooks, they always show a watermelon. And it's a special type of watermelon, the one with multiple lines. And guess what? I had totally forgotten that in 1991, which is like three lifetimes ago, we published an article on gastric antral vasculectasia, and this was published in Radiology. Pretty impressive by Bruce Urban. And here were some of the comments. It's a rare cause of chronic GI bleeding, characterized endoscopically by a distinctive appearance of prominent red vascular folds transversing the gastric antrum and radiating to the pyloric sphincter. So a really, really great case. Again, unusual, more common in females, older patients associated with cirrhosis and achlorohydria. But again, it's an extremely, extremely rare case and when you make the diagnosis, you can resect it and the patient will do fine. Again, the antral fold prominence appears to result from bunching of the mucosa in the thickened hypercontractile antrum. So very good path radiology correlation. Now here's another case. I look at this case and I'm thinking bulky tumor lymphoma, gist tumor. It's in the antrum of the stomach. It's really large looks like some sort of aggressive malignancy. It extends down toward and into the patient's duodenum. You know, it's a big bulky tumor, antrum, duodenum, lymphoma, polypoid masses, gist tumors, metastasis. You're thinking about all sorts of possibilities. Again, it's interesting that it's the antrum and that's classically the appearance 
And so we showed you the, the uh, watermelon stomach, which again is in the antrum. And this is also typically in the antrum, simulating gastric mass, a duodenal mass, or even potentially a bulky pancreatic lesion. Again, showed nicely on the volume rendered views. And it's this lobular capillary hemangio of the stomach. Again, a very unusual diagnosis. Uh, it can occur in other parts of the GI tract, from the esophagus to small bowel and colon. Um, again, presentation is bleeding. I think a good rule for gastric masses of all types, except maybe uh, for the most part ectopic pancreas, almost every stomach lesion can bleed. Even ectopic pancreas, in fact, can bleed as well. Um, this is some of the concepts about this lesion described well over a hundred years ago. And, uh, you know, it's typically more commonly in Asia and our, we reported a case about it. Now, I also mentioned before about gastric juvenile polyps, and I'm showing this case again, just to show you how similar it looks to the last two cases. So these unusual tumors are very hard. They're large. The vascularity of that watermelon stomach is a bit more helpful. The other cases tend to be bulky, mildly vascular, but not very vascular. So it is kind of tricky. And interestingly, the antrum tends to be a favored location. So when you see a big bulky antral lesion, think of these possibilities. Don't just assume it must be lymphoma, just tumor, or carcinoma. Now the last thing I'll show you is this case. Really thickened gastric folds beginning in the fundus, ending in the body. At first glance, you could say, could this be polyposis? And I guess it could be, but it's really grossly thickened folds. What gives you really thickened folds? Well, if a patient has a gastrinoma, they can get really thickened folds in the stomach. That's one possibility. We talk about infiltration of the stomach giving you thick folds, but not these lobulations. And also what's unique in this case, it typically involves the fundus and maybe the body, but does not go to antrum typically beautiful example of this, and it's Menetriere's disease, a very unusual disease. Uh, I remember seeing a case on fluoroscopy once. It's a rare disorder characterized by massive overgrowth of mucus cells in the mucous membrane lining the stomach, resulting in large gastric folds. The most common symptom is pain in the upper mid-region of the stomach. And again, uh, treatment usually is partial gastrectomy a very important diagnosis to think about it because otherwise all you're thinking about is a process like lymphoma or maybe even a polyposis with infiltration by tumor. So I've now covered a lot of entities. You have to say that there is a wide range of gastric tumors and diagnosis and it can be really challenging. Again, the most important thing is determining the presence of gastric pathology. And so a quality CT scan with IV contrast, with water as a contrast agent for gastric distension is critical. And again, always think about the common things, adenocarcinoma, lymphoma, gist tumor, metastasis. But remember there's other possibilities, especially when you get bulky lesions in the antrum. Think about some of the things we spoke about. Think about enhancing lesions, which are typically not GIST and not adeno and not lymphoma. Think about things from annular pancreas to carcinoid tumors. And think about some of the polyposis syndromes and the importance of looking very carefully, trying to determine whether you have just simple polyps or malignant uh, changes in polyps, which again, from CT perspective, can be very difficult. But when the polyps start getting larger, Surely over a centimeter, you really have to worry. And with that, I'll thank you for your attention, and I hope you find one of these cases. And if you do, don't forget, send it to me. We'll add it to our lecture. And with that, have a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.